welcome to another Looney Tunes review video. If you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to follow my journey to review all 1000 Looney Tunes shorts and give this video a like as well. So this is a review for Doe for the Dodo and with me today is my fellow Dodo, S.C. McPeter. Say hi. Well done. Well done. You get to... Thumbs up from me on that one. I just, I, I just hope though, with that sound, you are the last of the dodos. But anyway, <laughs> if my ears don't break first. But anyway, just a few bits of info here. This is Do for the Dodo, released on the third of September, nineteen forty-nine. It had a blue ribbon reissue at some point in the fifties. It's the 566 in the series and it's directed by Frizz Freely. You can currently find this on the Looney Tunes Gone Collection Volume One DVD set. I have a link below to that although a hd version has appeared and it's on apple tv although there are photoshop titles in the beginning which is unfortunate but anyway the cartoon itself is still pretty intact synopsis well porky is off to wacky land to try and find the last of the dodos and encounters many weird and strange things. Sounds familiar, doesn't it, SC? Mm. Yeah, monotonous, isn't it? Mm. Could it be a remake? It indeed is a remake. Mm. It's a remake of the Bob Clampett classic Porky in Wacky Land. There are a few differences that we'll go through in a moment, but it's essentially a shot-for-shot -shot remake, you know, give or take a few bits, which, again, we'll discuss shortly. But what's really interesting, though, is that this is actually the last time Frizz Freely would do a short where Porky is a solo starring character. Now, some may argue Curtain Raisin was that because this is just a quote-unquote lazy remake, as some have said. But <laughs> given that this came out after Curtain Razor and it still counts, because he still directed this, even though it would have been a fairly quick job for him, I say this is the last one. So if you disagree, let me know. But I say it is. I mean, what do you think? Do you agree with that? Uh, yeah, I'm kind towards these remakes and cheaters and such. They had to get these cartoons out. They wanted to focus on other shorts. They could get away with it. You can't get away with it now, sadly. But you know what? It makes sense. Exactly. I mean, even Bob Clampett, you know, the director of the original Porky Back Lad, he did some cheaters, cartoons, including the famous, you know, What's Cooking Doc. So, yeah, you know, he did Tim Pinelli Cats, which also pretty much was a remake of Porky and Wacky Land. Exactly. And what's really interesting is that there is a section in this one that's the rubber band part. But the rubber band part actually comes from Tim Pan Alley Cats, which, of course, yeah, mm -hmm. is, is a partial remake of Porky in Wacky Land. And, you know, just to go through a few things in this, the voices of the Three Stooges part is seems to be different, although the gag's the same. <laughs> But you were saying that the entire soundtrack seems to be redone. It seems they based off a few parts of the music track from the original, but they re-recorded the entire thing. It's all out of lip sync in the first third especially. Everything's out of sync with the lips. I guess maybe audio technology improved since the 30s, so maybe they just did it, or maybe they just didn't have a clean enough sounding copy on hand. I don't know. You'd, you'd think they would just reuse the soundtrack, but what do I know? <laughs> well, but yeah, Fritz also did change a few parts as well. It does also look like, interestingly, that Fritz also based a few of the color choices off Tim Pinelli Cats, which isn't surprising considering he would have had to have taken parts from it for the rubber band part. Exactly. And I noticed the backgrounds are a lot more different. So, mm -hmm. uh, like, for example, you know, the pipe in the tree is actually framed differently. And, like, there's an eaten cuckoo clock. I never thought I'd ever say that in my life. But anyway, an eaten cuckoo clock <laughs> instead of a tree in the window bit. So my guess is that not only did they redo the soundtrack, but they also went ahead and redid the background. So it seems to me yeah. that they just copied all the animation, the main animation, the characters, mm -hmm. and just redone all the backgrounds. I mean, what does that sound that right? Me, yeah, what interests me is that a lot of people describe the original Wacky Land short as, be, as having a very Dolly-esque environment. But when I watched Doe for the Dodo, it seems that they took the, the Salvador Dolly part and made it a bit more literal in terms of the whole desert and surrealism and the way it's rendered in general. Mm. So that was a bit more of Paul Julian's look. Another thing that interests me is that there's an old little piece of, of intern reactions to Porky and Wacky Land. One of them, I believe, was, I think, from Mike Baltese or Frank Tashlin, saying that the biggest shame about the cartoon was that it wasn't any color. Well, I guess this accomplishes that. Yeah, exactly. 
And I got to say, the backgrounds are still amazing looking, even though, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, it's a remake and all, and all that. Hey, information about the dodo. Quick, Anthony, tell me, where does he live? What's he like? Where did he go? Which way? That away. The ending is also different. It has the same punchline. Mm -hmm. But the th funny thing about the ending, if you look at the animation, because they didn't trace a lot of that part, you can tell that it becomes Frizz Freeling's sensibilities in the character. Like, mm -hmm. Porky just looks different than what he looked like in the Clampin' bit. Mm -hmm. I mean, did you notice bit, that? Yeah, it's a bit kinder to Porky as well, because he doesn't find out that the Dodo that we see isn't the last of the Dodos. You know, in terms of the short itself, despite the fact that it's a remake, it's like, oh, hey, okay, fine, it's a remake. What, what it was one thing. Here's the interesting thing for me. This came out on the Looney Tunes Golden Collection Volume 1. And I've, that's, of course, the first volume I watched. And a, and a lot of people would have watched. And this was on there. Not Wacky Lad. This one. And so I mm -hmm. watched it. And I loved it. I loved it then. I still love it now. Maybe not as much as Porking Wacky Land. But it's still a pretty fun looking mm -hmm. short to watch. And then when I got volume two, what's on there? Porking Wacky Land. And I'm thinking, hang on. Mm -hmm. Didn't I see this cartoon before? What's going on here? So I then looked into the history. And sure enough, yeah, I learned it was a remake. And I was like, well, that's a bit weird. But... Anyway, yep, I mean, yep. did that happen with you? Nope, I think I seen Wacky Land first, and like you said, it is a little bit whack that they did that. I know that the history with the Golden Collection is that they had to use a pre-made list by Warner Brothers for most of the cartoons, which is probably why they had to use the Doe for the Dodo, because of course it's in color, and color is more marketable. Not today, but of course in Warner's mindset it was then. Because if you look at the history of the Looney Tunes Golden Collection, and I really should probably do a video on that, if you want me to do a video on that, let me know in the comments. But you'll notice it starts off with very safe cartoons, all in color. Stuff that would have been shown on Cartoon Network heaps of times. In fact, a lot of the masters used for the first collection were masters that were already TV ready, I guess. And mm -hmm. then gradually, they will slowly add black and white cartoons. And then they'll slowly add not only more black and white cartoons, but also the racist stuff. So by volume yeah. six, you've got the World War II stuff with Japanese and stereotypes yeah, and all that stuff. Yeah, and you've got like the, op and like the opening of the disc says that it's for the collector only, which is the only one of those golden collection discs that says that. Exactly right. So now mm -hmm. what, what to score this one? I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of tough because Porky Wacky Land is a 10 out of 10 short for me, but this one is not a bad cartoon, but I have to sort of deduct a few points for being a bit of a cheater. I mean... But I still like it. Uh, you know, for me, mm -hmm. I guess I've got to give it 8 out of 10 because I still am entertained. Yeah, I, I agree it's 8 because, of course, you were never going to find out that this was a remake originally. Mm. And you know what? That's fine with me because, well, not every cartoon needs to be it. And, of course, Frizz would have been trying to focus on something like High Diving Hair in production, which is perfectly fine because that one's a great cartoon exactly right just one more note is that during some some of the music's been rechanged and part of when porky's rechasing the dodo paul stalin almost directly reuses some music he used when the wizard is chasing toto for his wand back and ted ashbow's the wizard of oz which stalin also scored way back in 1933 oh wow okay that's uh... a <laughs> It should be a bit of uh, musical trivia there. Honestly, I, I think if most, most people watch the two, they probably won't even notice much of a difference between the two. It's obsessive nerds like us, I guess, uh, <laughs> will <laughs> look into it. But, <laughs> but, but for those of you watching it who know this cartoon, well, there are differences, and there they are. So I think we'll wrap this one up here. So as always, guys, thank you so much for listening. And until next time, take care. That's all, folks. I'm rich! I'm rich! I got the last dodo! I got the last dodo! Oh, internet, no, you haven't. I'm rich. I've got the last dodo.